Pi class. We're going to talk here about counting a little bit, uh, the sort of counting you need to do some of the probability problems and just some of the counting problems. Um, so first I'm going to talk about a general counting uh, technique that kind of uses trees. It helps you visualize what's going on. Uh, then I'm going to work through four examples, and the four examples basically correspond to permutations uh, with and without replacement, so there'll be two examples, and then combinations with and without replacement. And then the last slide will be just a um, review of all the, the stuff that we've covered so far. Okay, so our first little thing to look at is here I'm going to choose um, a lunch, I'm going to choose a, a kind of sandwich, and then a kind of side, and then one of these drinks, and then a dessert, okay? So we want to know how many uh, lunches there are possible to make here, okay? And I'm going to view this basically as a sequence of tasks, namely choosing the sandwich first, then the side, then the drink, then the dessert, <clears throat> okay? Um, so there are four ways to choose a sandwich, that's pretty clear, okay? And then for each way of choosing a sandwich, we can have four sides. So we do this for each sandwich. So there's one, there's a choice, or a bunch of choices, right? There's a bunch of choices. Okay, where's our last one? There is a bunch of choices. So all together, there are four times four, which is 16 many ways of choosing this um, sandwich, then a side, okay? And then we go on and we choose some drinks, right? So for now, each of our 16 choices, right? We have three options for drinks, okay? And you see we're making this kind of tree-like structure, okay? And so a branch corresponds to, you know, an actual choice, right? And then sort of a leaf right now corresponds to a drink, if you like, but think of that as a branch, okay? So the branch on the top would be, I don't know, whatever, that's a salami sandwich, then some sort of soup, and then a Starbucks coffee, right? That would be the, the branch across the top there. Right, so that happens for each one of these things, and so there's a bunch of these. All right, we just keep going. Okay, and then finally we just sort of do them all, I think. There we go. Okay, so all together there are four times four times three ways of choosing things. And you see basically we're getting this kind of product rule, right? So we had four choices for the first one, four choices for the second one, three choices for the third one, and you know, if we, if we stopped and didn't choose dessert, we would have four times four times three ways of choosing a sandwich, a side, and a drink. Okay, now we're going to choose our dessert, and you probably guessed the same thing, right? We get the, you know, for each one of our choices there. So here I've got a choice, you know, going through that um, sort of long sandwich, right? And then this kind of pea salad, and again, a Starbucks coffee, which I must like, All right? And then, the, and then the branch on top would give me this, um, I don't know, this, this little thing with a cherry on top. Okay, so for each one of those, we get a choice, you know, two, two choices for each, two choices again, right? And then that happens all the way across there. Okay, so there we've taken care of that one little bit of the branch, right? And I, and I don't want to fill this out with all the choices because you just wouldn't be able to see anything, right? Um, but there's four times four times three times two way of choosing the complete lunch, right? Um, so, so you see this kind of product rule, okay? And that's the main thing. So, so we get this product rule here, right? So given a sequence of n tasks, where the ith task has m sub i possible outcomes, uh, all of which are independent, independent meaning that, that what I do in the previous ones don't change the number of outcomes that I get, okay? Um, then there will be a total of the product, m1 times m2 all the way through mn, right? So in our previous example, I had four tasks. The first task had four outcomes, the second task had four outcomes, the third task had three outcomes, and the last task had two outcomes. I'll just go back and remind you of this, right? So we had four outcomes here, four here, three, and then two, right? Um, when we look at this, right, so then I, here I would get four times four times three times two, right, would be my total number of outcomes. And that's what we call this product rule, okay? Other things go by the word product rule, but this is this is our product rule here. Okay, so here, now we're going to just work some examples basically using this rule, okay? Um, and along the way, we'll develop some formulas that we'll, we'll use from these. But, but here's going to be our typical example for all these. I'm going to draw five ping pong balls um, from a set of 40 numbered uh, ping pong balls. And in this case, I'm going to do it without replacement and where order matters, right? And so I'm going to say how many possible outcomes are there? And we're going to view, um, you know, choosing these five as a sequence of five tasks, right? So the first uh, task will be draw a ball and set it aside. So here I say I draw the 11, right? And the second task will be draw another ball and set it aside. So it's 32. And the order matters. It's 11, then 32. 
And then we do that five, you know, the rest of the five times, and we get 11, 32, 21, 7, 29, right? Those balls right there. Um, and, you know, the first task here, this one, right? We chose this ball, and so there are 40 possible outcomes. Now that ball's gone. We didn't replace it, right? So on the next task, we draw this ball, and there are 39 possible outcomes, etc. right? So we're just going down by one each time, right? So there are five tasks, and we'll have 40 times 39 times 38 times 37 times 36 will be the total number of ways of doing this. And that's just our product rule, right? And so that's what the product rule says. Okay, and then we have this kind of fancy notation for this. So um, 40, 40 factorial just means multiply everything up to 40, you know, 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to 40. 35 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to 35, right? So everything cancels there except these numbers that are left over. So this is just a fancy way of writing that. Okay, and then we also write it again like this where, where the point is we take our 40 that we're choosing out of, right? We're choosing 5. And we do 40 minus 5 here, okay? And that's the usual formula here for this thing, which is called the permutations uh, of, I don't remember, five, five objects out of 40 objects. I'm, I'm not, I don't remember the language right now, actually, but but it's 78,960,960 such things. So it's a big number, right? So these numbers get big really fast. Okay, 40 factorial would be huge, but we're not we're not actually computing that. In fact, you have to be careful how you compute this. Uh, maybe Excel wouldn't even compute 40 factorial. You have to be a little cautious about this sort of thing. Um, okay, so our next example is going to be similar. So, so what do we do here? Here we here we took a ball and didn't put it back in. We took a ball and we didn't put it back in, right? So in the next one, right, suppose we change it a little bit, and this time we draw five balls, but in each draw we record what we drew and replace it. So the main thing here is we're replacing it. We're sticking it back in. Um, this would be the same as if I use, say, in Excel, the random number generator, and I just said uh, ran between 140 and and did that thing um, five times, right? And then looked at the set of five numbers I got. That that's the sort of thing we're doing here, because because you sort of have infinitely many choices of the um, balls, right, from one to 40 each time. <clears throat> okay, or if you had a 40-sided die, right, and you're just throwing a 40-sided die, it's like that. Okay. In this case, task one has 40 outcomes. Task two also has 40 outcomes because we're putting things back, et cetera, right? So, so each task has 40 outcomes. And so the, the product rule says that the total number of outcomes will be 40 times 40 times 40, five times, right? It's like this. So it's just 40 to the five, right? And so there are 102,400,000 of those outcomes, okay? So even bigger number than before. That makes sense because each time we have a few more things we can choose, okay? All right, now in the next, what we're going to do in the next two examples is look at the previous two examples, but where we uh, don't worry about order. We're going to kind of throw away order, okay? And that makes them a little bit more complicated, okay? So in the first one, <clears throat> I'm going to look at uh, the basically the first thing where we drew five out of the 40 numbers without replacement, so without replacement. Um, and now instead of asking how many ways we could draw those five, we just say how many sets of five balls do we end up with, right? Um, so just to make that clear, here's two examples, right? This is the same set of five balls, just ordered in two different ways, right? So here I could have drawn an 11, a 32, a 21, a 7, a 29. Here I draw a 32, 29, 7, 21, and 11, but these are the same sets. So another way of asking this question is I could just reach into my bag and just grab five balls all at once, right? Because I'm not replacing anything. I just reach in and grab five balls, right? Same, how many sets of five balls would I get that way? That's what we're asking, right? Um, and the main thing here is we know how to count these ordered selections. That was that was what we did just a minute ago. All we need to do now is know how many times we're counting the same set, right? So here I've written down two ways of counting the set. How many ways are there of counting this particular set of five balls? Okay, and that's yet another counting task, similar to the one we just did. Okay, so when so when we go on, how many ways are there to place the eleven balls? So I mean. You know, I've got the 11 ball, I can stick it here, I can stick it here, 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 or here. And there are five places, right? So I, I put it somewhere and I get five, okay? And then I get the next ball to look at. So how many ways are there to place the 32 ball? Well, the 11 ball's put somewhere, like here it's put there, here it's put there. And that leaves me four places that I could then go and stick the 32 ball, right? So there would be four places I could stick that. Okay, and then you keep going. How many places are there to put the 21 ball after the previous two have been placed, right? There will be three places. How many places to put the seven ball? So at this point, we've placed four of the five balls. And there's only one place to put the last one, so we get that, okay? 
All right, and so I have these five tasks. And again, the numbers we get here, I mean, I could change this from 11 to 32 first, right? I mean, I could change the order in which I consider these things, but these outcomes always be five, four, three, two, one. That's the kind of independence we needed, all right? So altogether, there's five factorial, again, ways of reordering these five balls, right? Um, that would give me the same subset, okay? So we knew from example one that there are this many, oops, there's a typo, that should be uh, 40, um, uh, permutation of five objects out of 40, right? Not 35, right? And so and so that was given as 40 factorial over 35, ways of selecting those five balls, okay? Um, we've overcounted, we've counted each set five factorial many times, right? So we need to divide by that. We've overcounted, you know, every set we're interested in, we counted five factorial many times, so we need to divide by five factorial to get the right number for the sets of five balls. So here we go. All right, um, I fixed that notation here. So this is 40, choose five. Um, so we do our, we choose our ordered sets, ordered sequences, right, of five without replacement. Then we divide by how many times we overcounted each thing, right? If you just sort of work through the math, we get, we get the, you know, the, the 40, um, uh, permutation of five out of 40 is 40 factorial over 35 factorial. We got to divide by this five factorial. So this becomes 40 factorial over 35 factorial, five factorial. And our formula will be th uh, like, in, we're, if we're choosing M things from N things, it'll be N factorial over M minus N factorial times M factorial. That's that's the formula that you see. And in Excel, of course, this is just equal combin 45, right? Um, okay. So there's there's that. And then our last example is we want to repeat now example two, but where I don't consider order, okay? Um, so there we drew the five balls, but we have replacement. And then we just want, we, then the order doesn't matter here, right? So so we have to think about this a little bit, okay? Um, so this is gonna involve a new trick. There's, there's a few ways of thinking about this, but this is, this is the way I'm gonna do it. Um, so uh, instead of thinking about drawing the actual balls, think of yourself as having 40, um, you know, bins or, you know, numbered boxes or bins, and you have five completely blank balls that you just throw into those 40 bins, maybe randomly, right? And so they land somewhere, right? And say that, say that you throw those five balls and it, it lands in box four, box four, box 17, and box 23, and box 23, right? So it wasn't really very random because they had box four twice, they had box 23 twice, but that's one of the one of the situations we have to consider. And this means that we would have had the, the set of balls for 4, 17, 23, 23, right? So that, that would be a choice where we're doing replacement, but we don't care about the order. So that would be the same as, you know, 23, 23, 17, 4, 4, or, you know, 4, 23, 4, 23, 17. All those would be the same, right? Um, <clears throat> okay, but this way we don't have to worry about all those sort of funny counting things. So I'm just going to think of myself as sort of throwing these balls into bins. And this is going to help me count. Okay, so so what I want to do is I want to make myself kind of 45 bins more or less, right? Where the where the where I'm throwing the ball, number of balls in there too. I've got to add one to make a, a line at the end so that I actually end up with 45 gaps in here, right? And you think about look at your fingers without your thumb there, and you have four fingers there and three gaps, right? So you need an extra finger. So that's that's the reason for that plus one. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to randomly choose five of those black lines. All right, and that and that'll be my choice. So I chose those two there, I chose one there, and I chose two there, right? Okay, and, and we're gonna say, well, how many ways are there to do that? First, and then, and then we're gonna turn those into our balls. So let me just do that, right? So we take those lines I just chose and we turn them into the balls right there, right? So this is this is a choice. I've just replaced a couple of these lines by the balls, <clears throat> by the by these two um, ping pong balls here, right? Uh, and that will leave us with 40 of these bins down here. And in this case, where I've thrown in two balls into to bin four, a ball into bin 17, and two balls into bin 23, right? So this this example here is matching the, those numbers up there, okay? So again, all I really did here is I took these um, 44 black lines here, right? I had 46 lines altogether, but I, I can't get rid of those. I need to stay inside a bin, right? Um, so I'm going to take my 44 lines that are that are not at the end, and I'm going to replace five of them with these balls. So I'm basically choosing five out of 44 here, All right? And so that's how many ways there are to do this. So there would be 44 choose five. That would be 44 factorial over 39 factorial times five factorial. So this many such sets like that. Okay, so that's the idea. So you may want to think about that and uh, work some examples, you know, so where you draw these pictures out or something if you want. 
um, but that's the way we count. Uh, and then and then now the next slide is just going to review all these. So here, here's our general rules. So a permutation without replacement. Um, this is where we just you know choose m many things from a set of n things without replacement. Right? That's that's that. Right? Or if you want to say, well, that's that's what it is. Okay. Um, that was example one. Okay. Um, permutation with replacement. So here I just you know I pick something, put it back in, stir it up, pick again, put it back in, stir it up. All right, and so here I had n choices each time, so there were n to the m many um, possibilities. Okay, these are both where order matters, right? These are both the two cases where order matters. Now we're going to have combinations, so combinations without replacement, right? So there I draw something, you know, I've got n things, I draw something, I don't replace it, I draw something else, don't replace it. Then when I get my selection, I don't worry about the order, so I have to divide by how many different ways I could have gotten that selection, right? And so this gives me this formula here, which is the standard formula for combination. Again, uh, Excel has this as a formula uh, equals permute nm. This has Excel formula equals combin nm. Okay. And then finally, we have this formula from the last one where I have um, selecting m things from n things with replacement. So I'm putting them back in each time. Um, so I can get duplicates, right? That's the difference between here and here, right? If I draw an 11 here, it's not available in the future. But here, if I draw an 11, it's available, you know, in the next draw, right? So that's the difference here, right? And and the um, formula for that one is this. So I just take my n and m and I add them together and subtract one. That was because, if you remember, I'm basically making the extra box and then I'm taking away the two end lines, right? So that's where that formula came from. Maybe Maybe let me just back up to that sheet explain that, right? So so to get this many lines, right, I took my 40 bins, my five balls, I added one to get this in line, right? But then I had to subtract two, right? So this is n plus m plus one minus two. So that turns into n plus m minus one, right? So that's where that formula comes from, n plus m minus one. And I'm choosing m of those lines to become balls, right? And so then, then just writing out the definition, I get that formula there. Okay, so hopefully this helps. That was it. That's the end of the slideshow. Uh, and um, good luck computing. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.